Hey everybody, today I have my third installment of my process video series featuring my Uptown Funk piece. Now, let me go over the things that we've talked about in the past videos. Process video number one, we talked about sketching. Process video number two, we talked about line work and how to use brushes in Illustrator. Now in video three, we're gonna be talking about fill and shading. And I definitely wanna make it clear, when I say fill, I do not mean color. Color is gonna be in my fourth video. Some of you are probably asking, what is fill? What I mean by that is I mean creating value across the illustration. What that means is taking grayscale colors, so basically only gray colors or only gray values, and using those to build up the illustration. You have a different shade of gray for the skin color. You have a different shade of gray for the hair, for the clothes, for the hat, etc. And what that allows is that allows you to basically know, okay, I need a darker color for the hair. I need a lighter color for the skin, things like that. It makes more sense when you see it and when you implement it. But enough about that. Let's get started with today's video. Enjoy. So in the past, I would normally fill in the color for one of these illustrations using my pen tool. I have used my pen tool to do things like this for a very long time. But recently I was turned on to the blob tool, or I should say the blob brush tool which has evidently been around for a while now, but I just never heard of it. Now, the difference between the pen tool and the blob brush tool is the fact that it's a lot faster. In reality, it's very similar to just coloring in your illustrations. Imagine your line work is basically a coloring book. It's, it's really, really fun, and it's almost therapeutic in a way. I've heard a lot of people complain about the blob brush tool. And I will say this, it has its limitations, but there are ways of getting around that. One thing I don't show in this video because I didn't learn about it until after I actually recorded this is that you can actually use different brushes for the blob tool. And by using a calligraphy brush, you can mess with the pen pressure sensitivity. So like when you're trying to get those little crevices and things like that, you can use the pen pressure to get a lot smaller so you don't go outside of the lines. But the cool thing is, you can just use the eraser to remove that excess blob. All right, so now we come to shading. Shading is an interesting thing. It's something that a lot of people struggle with, and even I to this day struggle with shading. It's something that you have to really work on and practice at, just like most things. What I do is I use a bright magenta color when I'm applying my shading. It really helps to contrast all of the grays that I'm using to create the fill. That way, I don't use like a darker black color or something like that. This way I can see perfectly where all of my shading is located. Like I said, shading is very difficult. You're not gonna get it right away. I know plenty of artists who don't even add shading to their illustrations because they don't know how to do it. And honestly, one of the only ways to get better at shading is just to do it, just to practice. You'll go back later on and see some of your old illustrations and the shading will be horrible. And that's fine. It's all part of the learning curve. I know for myself that there are illustrations I've done in the past and there's illustrations I've done today where I'm appalled at how horrible the shading is. And that's fine. It's all a learning experience. The reason why I use shading so much in my line work illustrations is because it helps give depth and helps bring life to the illustrations. Without the shading, they seem a little dull, but when you add that little bit of shading, it really makes a huge difference. Now, if you guys have any questions about shading or if you have any questions about the blob brush tool, please let me know in comments below. I will be perfectly happy to go back and create a video on each one of those things. Just let me know if you're interested in it. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video. Okay, so before I go, I wanna thank all of you, all of my amazing subscribers, all of you who took time out of your busy schedule to watch this video. It really means a lot to me that you did that. I also wanna mention my previous video I uploaded my top five tips to drawing better. Now, if you go to my website today, www.rockyrook.com forward slash YouTube, you can sign up for my newsletter and get a free copy 
of my five tips for drawing better ebook. So why should you sign up for my newsletter and why should you care about this ebook? Well, first, my newsletter is going to be coming out with a lot of great content in the future, including links to my videos, links to bonus videos that you'll only be able to get through the newsletter, blog posts, other articles, and more importantly, some great inspiration just for you. But why should you care about the ebook? Well, the ebook takes what the video talks about and expands on it much further, giving you a lot more great ideas. Please go to my website, www.rockyrook.com forward slash YouTube and sign up for my newsletter. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. Alrighty, everybody, that's it for this video. But before I go, remember, stay passionate, stay positive, and stay creative. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.